today on Be Something Wonderful. It's about the path, not the resistance. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. I had a really powerful session with a client yesterday, and in his, he said, Tom, I'm really struggling financially. And, and, I'm, and, and I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting into that abundance mindset. And every time I feel like I'm in that mindset or I feel like I'm on the right track or right path, something else comes up, either a, a new bill, a new, uh, uh, something that I didn't pay, creditors calling me, and, and it's just all this resistance that I'm, I'm trying to release, that I'm trying to get rid of but it never goes away and I just, it just keeps coming at me. Well guys, we're gonna talk about this today and more. I've got a really, really <laughs> big lesson on the path of least resistance. So it's not about the resistance that's the problem. The resistance is not the problem. All paths, hear this, all paths have resistance. That's why they call them the path of least resistance. They're not called the path of no resistance, right? You're trying to get rid of all resistance. Resistance is part of creation. It's necessary, right? So it's, it's not about, it's not about, it's the path of least resistance. That's why they call it that. They don't call it the path of no resistance, right? It's the inherent nature of nature in you to follow the path of least resistance, right? But the question then is, what, what path are you following, right? So it's not the resistance. Forget about the resistance. That's just part of the path. The issue is what path are you following, right? The neur remember, the neurons that fire together, why together? This is Hebb's law. Those neural pathways are the path of least resistance. So the question is, what do you keep wiring and what do you keep firing and wiring? Right? Is it, is it a mindset of, of credit cards and debt and problems and, 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 and lack and scarcity? Or is it of abundance and divine supply? Right? What are your neural pathways? Because your desired path or because, yeah, so, so those neural pathways are the path of least resistance, whether it's your desired path or not. Do you hear it? Those neural pathways could be wired to abundance could be wired to, to, to the divine supply of God, could be wired to freedom, right? But what are they wired to? What are you, what are you firing and wiring, right? That's the question because you're, it could be your desired path or not to change your path or the, or the underlying structure. It, you have to change your predominant thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and assumptions. Right? Just like a river, if you wanted to change the flow of a river, you got to change the underlying structure bed, of the riverbed. Right? Otherwise, it's going to keep flowing in the same direction. <laughs> right? Overall, guys, it's gonna, your, your, whatever path you're taking is going to be a happy ending. It's going to lead to eternity and salvation. But in the meantime, just like all major rivers lead to the ocean, in the meantime, what are you wiring and firing? So let's really hit this today like we never have before. The path of least resistance is about choosing the path, not trying to get rid of, of, of your life of resistance. You hear this, it's about choosing a path, not trying to get rid of the resistance. That's why they call it the path of least resistance. So you're gonna say, well, Tom, how do I choose? Well, how do you choose? When you choose and assume your desired end, in other words, when you focus on what you want, your desired end, without the attachment to it, with the knowing that it's yours, when you choose that law of assumption, in other words, when you choose the experience of reality you desire next, the path is chosen for you. Do you hear this? When you choose the end, the path of least resistance that you'll follow is chosen for you. Neville Goddard calls that the bridge of incidents, right? So it's chosen for you. It's a path of least resistance, not no resistance. Hear this. It's not, a, it's not all a bed of roses. <laughs> you need the resistance to propel you forward right, towards your wish fulfilled. It's part of it. Do you hear this today? This is so big, right? In other words, the experience of reality you desire. Next, 
the path is chosen for you. When you choose your desired end, when you choose your, your wish fulfilled, the law of assumption, right? Then the, the experience of reality you desire, the, net, the, the path is chosen for you. And it's a path of least resistance, not no resistance, right? So remember the laws of, remember the laws of rhythm, of balance, of opposites, of polarity. We talked about those in, in some previous videos. Everything is dual in nature. Everything has poles and everything has a pair of opposite, opposites. And those opposites in nature are always trying to find balance but never finds it. That's how you create. Because if we found perfect balance, then creation stops. The whole idea is that swing. That's how creation happens. That's how duality happens. That, that's how we, uh, relativity happens. Right? The poles or peers are not separate, but relative to each other and only different in degree of vibration. Only different in degree of vibration. You can't just say, I just want hot weather, not cold. Because co cold comes with the hot. Right? Oh, hot doesn't exist without cold, right? The poles or pairs are not separate, but relative to each other and only different in degree of vibration, right? The seed of one is in the seed of the other. In other words, one cannot exist without the other. High cannot exist without low. Hot cannot exist without cold. The unwanted cannot exist without the uh, the wanted can't exist without the unwanted. The desired cannot exist without the undesired. Just like the path can't exist without resistance. Wow, that's big, <laughs> right? That's big. So it's least resistance is the key, right? Follow the in the flow. We're going to uncover this right now. We're going to unpack it for you. In the same way, the path cannot exist without the resistance. I just said that. I was ahead of myself, right? This is big. Every action, mental or physical, gives rise to its opposite reaction. Every action, whether it's a mental action or a physical action, gives rise to its opposite reaction. Those reactions are labeled resistance or obstacles or sometimes or many times, most times, problems by you. When they're just opposites, they're the reaction to the action, to the mental or physical. Everything travels in pairs. It's the law of rhythm, the law of polarity, the law of opposites, right? So. It's not, a, it's not the universe or your subconscious trying to sabotage you. Rather, it's an essential part of reality creation in the world of duality. Do you hear this? This is so big today. Nothing's out to get you, right? Except yourself. It, it's not about you even sabotaging yourself, right? It's not about that. That's part of creation. Those opposites are part of creation, right? So the subconscious is not trying to, to terrorize you in any way. So... The resistance on your path is necessary to propel you to your desired end. Without it, you, wouldn't, you don't get there. It's not to stop you unless you resist the resistance. It's only your resistance to the resistance on the path of least resistance that's causing it to be a more resistant path. Do you get that? <laughs> that's big, right? And so the resistance on your path is necessary to propel you to your desired end. It's not to stop you unless you resist the resistance. By turning the path of least resistance into the path of most or more resistance. That's what you're doing. You're turning the path of least resistance into the path of most or more resistance. You're always following a path of least resistance. Whether it's what you, desire, whether it's what you choose or not choose is the question. Right? Is it being chosen for you or are you choosing it by imagining your desired end? Right? So, and look at it. And this is the, a good example in uh, aerodynamics and airplanes and jets. Here's my jet. <laughs> Just like uh, thrust and drag are necessary and work together to fly a plane, right? You can think of thrust as your mental and physical actions. Right? And then you can think of drag as the resistance or opposites to those mental and physical actions. Right? The, plan the, the propeller or the plane or the jets must have a thrust to move it forward, but that automatically creates drag as well. The opposite is there. But you have to have the opposite so it can propel itself. Without resistance, how does it thrust forward? Right? The flying of the plane is your experience of reality. Right? The plane is your desired or your desired end. Do you hear this? So that's a great example. So let's hit this a little bit more. 
The thrust, your mental and physical actions, opposes the drag, right? The resistance. So the thrust, remember those are your mental and physical actions, they oppose the drag or the resistance. The jet overcomes the resistance and the drag to get in the air. Do you hear that? The jet overcomes the drag or the resistance, just like you do by, a mat, by persisting in and imagining your wish fulfilled. You overcome that resistance. You're on the path of least resistance, right? But you overcome it by imagining your desired end. Do you see this, right? As the desired, and, and here's what happens with the jet. As the desired airspeed, the altitude, and the velocity is reached, you can take your seatbelts off. <laughs> We have reached altitude, right? Hear this. So as you, as, as you overcome that drag, that resistance, and then get at a level place where you're, just, where you're in the Sabbath, where you're just enjoying your desire, you can take your seatbelt off. You can relax. The thrust now equals the resistance. You have found that, right? But you, and this, what does it mean really? It means you're in the flow. You're aligned with source. You're aligned with your higher self. That's what that means when you find that desired airspeed or that altitude, right? When the plane lands, it's the same idea, but it's the opposite. When the plane lands, the thrust, the mental actions, the mental or physical actions are reduced below the level of drag or resistance, right? Now you're reducing them, right? Balance is necessary so you don't crash land on your desires, right? So you get something, but then you lose it. You crash. That's why you're not, it's because you're, 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 you're not maintaining that balance, right? So it, you gotta be in that flow, you gotta be aligned with source, right? When a plane lands, the thrust or the action is reduced below the level of drag, so it's enabled to land. That's big. So what's the key? The key is to rise to the level of your desired and imagined end, your desired outcome, right? Uh, your desired reality and version of yourself. Right? Rise to the level of your desired end, your desired version of yourself. Right? Overcome the drag. That's what it does. That's what persistence really means. It's not about effort. It's just imagine you wish fulfilled. That resistance is necessary. It's part of the path of least resistance. It's part of creation. Right? And overcoming it is part of it. The resistance is still there. It just equals drag now. Do you see it? It equals the drag, so now you're, 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 you're flowing, you're in the flow, you're aligned with source. All paths have resistance, and it's the law of nature to take the path of least resistance. You always will take the path of least resistance. The question is, how are you choosing? If you're not desiring your wish fulfilled, it's being chosen for you. The neurons are firing and wiring a path that you may not desire or you may not choose. Wow, that's big. That's why unless you change the underlying level of your consciousness, the structure, the underlying structure of your consciousness, you stay in or return to your old undesired reality or version of yourself, right? The, and that becomes your path of least resistance. That's why it returns to it. That's why, the, that's why it always, like, in the, like when, you, when you carve out those neural pathways, that's why the thoughts, the feelings, the beliefs always follow that because they're so entrenched, right? They're so practiced, right? And so that's why sometimes you get your desire and then, or something happens, it's, it's headed towards it, you get good news and then you get the bad news and then you lose it. You have it and then you lose it, right? So, and the structure or level determines the path of least resistance for you. So, so that's the story. That's why unless you change the underlying level of your consciousness, the structure, you stay in a return to your old undesired reality or version of yourself. That's the path of least resistance for you. And that structure or level determines the path of least resistance for you. <sighs> so big, a tongue twister today. So your level of consciousness, your self-concept, your beliefs and assumptions are like the riverbed, right? Like the riverbed determines the path of least resistance of the water that flows through it, so do your beliefs, assumptions, and concepts of yourself in the world determine your path of least resistance. Unless you, unless you go in and change that riverbed, that, river's all, that water's always gonna flow the same way, no matter what, no matter what you do, no matter how much splashing you do around there, right? No matter what you do, try to do with that water, unless you change the underlying structure of your consciousness, your beliefs, assumptions, and concepts of yourself, it will flow in that same direction. And that does become the path of least resistance, even though it's not the path that you desire 
or want, right? Hebzla, right? Neurons that, fi neurons that fire together, wire together. As you imagine your desired end, as you persist in the end of fulfillment, the path of least resistance changes as your underlying structure of beliefs, assumptions, and self-concepts change. Do you see this? As you believe something differently, as you assume something differently, as your self-concept of who you are, as you think about yourself and others differently, and as you persist in that, as you frequent that, as you do that over and over again, then that path changes. That riverbed changes. And that water is now flowing in, in, in the direction of where you want it, to everything that you want. That's why it's not about resistance. It's about the path. It's about the path, not about resistance. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification button, like and share our videos. That's how we get our message out. You can follow us on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. We have a group called the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors. It's a totally open group, and, uh, but it's private. So it's not shared with the other, with, uh, to the public unless you're a member. And this way you can share your, your stories, you can ask for guidance and insight, you can give guidance and insight and so forth. It's a great group. You can join it at facebook.com slash groups slash be something wonderful. Also be sure to join us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, or just go to our website anytime for all that information and more at tomkaren.com or be something wonderful.com. Creators and members, Another big video is coming out on the membership channel as well, probably by tomorrow. Until next time, with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude, see you soon.